Hey guys, Julian here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make rolling techno kicks. So to go along with this, I actually just dropped a rolling techno mix, which I'm also just now realizing that those two words, kicks and mix, rhyme. Anyway, yeah, the link to that is going to be in the description. If you like this video, you will probably like that mix, so go ahead and check it out. Enjoy, leave a like, leave a comment. And yeah, so to go along with this video, I'm going to be giving away all the project files and samples and stuff like that that we make in this video for free in the description, so make sure to check that out. If you're a patron on my Patreon, check there, because all of that will be available shortly without a download gate. Um, and yeah, let's get started. So I wanted to make this video to just kind of show you how to get like that really like strong, kind of like intense, pulsing, sort of like, yeah, rolling techno kick. And it's kind of like two things. One, it's the kick. And then two, it's kind of like the stuff around it and how that is enhancing and accentuating and complementing what's going on with the kick. So to go with the kick, or the first thing here, the kick, I guess, um, this is the kick that I have. And so the way that I made this was by taking this kick sample. This one, like a pretty kind of like beefy, sort of like, yeah, just hard hitting kick. I've got it in here, you can see. And then I put that through a drum bus. So with the drum bus, you can see I'm adding a little bit of boom. I've got a bit of crunch, a bit of drive. It's not doing a whole lot, but you can hear it really helps to add more power to the kick. It really makes that like impact, like the attack at the start, stand out a lot more. Then after that, I have this audio effect track. And what I'm doing with this is this is how I'm kind of making that like pulsating rumble that you hear. Um, so what we've got is we've got two chains. We've got a clean chain. And then an effect chain. And so basically what I'm doing here is I've got these two and I'm kind of like blending them together. And so on the effect chain, what we've got is first we have the simple delay. So I'll show you kind of what I'm doing here. Basically, the simple delay is just doing this. It's just doing the 16th, the 16th note delay. So I've just got the left and right ear linked, so it's a mono delay. Then we've got, yeah, 16th notes, feedback is set like that. I've got it 100% wet since this is the wet chain. And yeah, then after that, I've got it going through an amp. You can see I've got the heavy setting here. I've got a pretty high amount of gain as well as a pretty high amount of bass. And you'll listen. And so that's what that's doing. <laughs> so quite industrial, quite raw sounding and like heavy, but... Basically, the goal here is to create this so we get that nice, like... Obviously, it's enhancing everything, like, in the frequency spectrum including the very high highs. But also you can hear it's got that nice rumbling low end. So then after that, I have this EQ8 and I'm using that to just hone in on the rumbling low end. So then what I'm doing here is you can see I'm making, I'm kind of got this low pass where it's just cutting off on the high end like that. And then you can see we've also got this little cut here cutting around 100 hertz. And the reason for this, or cutting at, yeah, 102 hertz. So the reason for this is because this had a lot of stuff around that frequency range. And the problem is that that's where the punch for the kick is happening. Like, that's where that really strong impact is all coming from. So, if you have too much of that going on in the bass, which that's effectively what this is, just the bass line. Um, yeah, it can get in the way and just get kind of messy. So that's why I'm cutting that out. I also did a little bit of a low end boost. Just to kind of bring it out a little bit more. You never have too much with this stuff. And yeah, that's it for the EQ8. After that, I have this auto pan, and what I'm doing with this is I'm trying to sort of like simulate side chaining this to the kick. The problem with this kick is that it's a little bit too long. It's got that little tail there to side chain things to it. It just gets kind of weird, and like it does, it ducks out of the way in the wrong way. Um, so I've got this auto pan to combat that, and I'm just using this to kind of, like I said, get that pulse. So what I'm doing here is I've got it on mono. The phase is at zero. You can see we've got saw wave, and I've got it inverted. Then I've just got it on quarter notes. Uh, yeah, on quarter notes. And I've just got the shape up a little bit, so you can see it's kind of like doing that curve. And this is how I'm getting it out of the way of the kick. Without this, it's kind of like... Neither one of them can really shine because they're both fighting for the same space. But when I add the auto pan... There we go, we get the best of both because this is ducked out of the way when the kick is playing and then obviously the kick is not playing while this is doing all these delays. So then after that, on everything, like after this audio effect rack, I've got this EQ8, you can see I'm just cutting out a little bit around like 
267 hertz. Just kind of like the a lot of the quote unquote boxy frequencies because this distortion in here is doing a lot. Like it's adding a lot of uh, very good things, but also some things you don't always want. So I'm just kind of trying to clean that up. And then I've got this boost here. This kind of helps with the punch of the kick. If you listen without it, And then with it, it's like right around there where the kick is like really clicking. And so it helps to give it a bit more attack. So then after that, I've got one more EQ8 here. You can see I'm just using this to do a little bit of last minute stuff. So here's without it. And then with it. So you can hear it's kind of like mastering the kick, so to speak. So what I'm doing here is I'm just boosting the low end a bit with the shelf. I'm boosting the high end a little bit with the shelf as well to kind of give it like a nice bass boost as well as a nice high end boost for the kind of like clicky top end. And then I've got a little cut here around right at 202 hertz. So kind of similar to that one I made on the last EQ just to kind of get rid of those boxy frequencies. You can hear they're coming through a little bit even after that cut. But when I add that, it just helps to do that final sort of like cut on those. So that is the kick. So like I said, this is a really nice way to get like a rolling kick like if you have this delay this is basically just your standard techno kick where you'll do like the rumble with like a reverb or something like this like like that's a pretty standard techno kick but then by adding the delay instead of a reverb it's kind of making it more like sharp and you really hear those 16th notes so it's like duh, 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 as opposed to just doom 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 So yeah, pretty nice way to do that. So then the next thing that we have here is this little synth. And so this is really doing like the part of it that I was saying like everything else is playing around the kick. As you can hear, like obviously, okay, you don't want to just have the kick in the techno track. But then if you have like some stuff around it, you don't want to just have it playing like, you don't want to just have a synth that's playing maybe something like this. Like, that would just not really... I guess it works, but it definitely doesn't add to like the rolling feel. Like, basically what I'm trying to say here uh, is that you just need to kind of try to make everything work towards the same goal of making it really have that like pulsing, rolling kind of feel. And that's the point of having like a fast synth like this. The way that I made this was basically, I'll show you the notes. It's really just this one note, it's just playing F. Um, and you can see what I've got it doing here is it's playing this pattern where it's just playing like every other 16th note. Like this. And then what's happening, and I'll explain this more when I get to it, is I have this delay doing 16th notes. And the delay is a little filtered, so then that's playing all those spaces in between there. But because the delay is a little filtered, it makes those ones, it just gives it more kind of like detail and nuance than if I just did like this. Yeah, that's just like one velocity the whole time through. If we do it this way, the delay kind of makes it, you know, go in and out like that. And I guess you can do this with the velocity as well with programming it in Operator, but I just like to do it this way. It's a little bit more kind of, uh, I don't know, just a little bit more interesting to me. But yeah, so that's how I made the notes. With this one, it's really more about the sound. So the way that I made this was using Operator. I'll turn off all of this processing. How about that? And show you kind of what this sounds like. But basically what this is, is it's this pretty straightforward FM type of sound. And it's just meant to be like a little, like, you know, just a little synth stat. So there's the sound. It's really almost more like a percussion, if you ask me. Like, it's just kind of a quick hit. And so what it is, is I've got the square 16 waveform, and then I've got these other ones, the saw 3 and just the sine wave, doing some FM with those. So if I turn off the filter here, that's basically the sound. You can hear I'm playing it in that really low octave. I like how it sounds. It's got a cool texture. And since this isn't meant to be like a melody synth, like I don't need it to be like, you know, playing melody notes. It's okay to play it in that text, in that note where, or at that low octave where, it just kind of becomes like flabby like that. But yeah, so it's just a square and then the saw wave and then the sine wave. You can see I'm playing around with the envelopes and all of those. So just kind of do it in like an interesting way. To be honest with you, I didn't have like a particular goal 
with this sound, I just wanted to make something kind of rhythmic and cool with FM, so I was just really playing around and thinking more about texture and, like, the way it sounds than, like, how I'm really doing all of it, if that makes any sense. But yeah, you can see I've got these at all different octaves, and yeah, then after that, it's going into a low-pass filter. Pretty simple, it's just adding that little pluck with the envelope, you can see I've also got the shaper on there, the sign shaper, I've got the drive all the way up, which is making it a bit more intense, no resonance, frequency is there. And that's it for inside of operator. After that, we just got a bit of this vocoder. You see what I'm doing is I have it on this modulator setting where basically it's not like it's not like a regular vocoder where you have to put like a voice into it or something like that to get it to hear anything. This is just using it kind of like a filter. Basically, I'm using this format filter here, and what you can hear is that's what's coming through the vocoder, like this cool, very digital sounding kind of synth sound. And I didn't want that to be entirely the sound because it doesn't have enough like sharp highs that I want. But it is a nice layer, so what I did is I just brought the dry wet down. And there we go, we kind of get a little bit of that in there, just for some flavor. So then the next thing I have here is this filter delay, and what I'm using this for is for this quick 16th note delay. And you can see what's happening is I've got it set like this, I've got the filter there. So basically, that's what's happening. Like I was telling you earlier, when it plays these notes, these ones are louder than the ones in between. And this is what's doing that, if I move the filter, See, then it'll be the same. But yeah, so it's a really cool technique. Again, I like doing it this way. It's a little bit more interesting to me than just, like, programming it. This kind of came as a happy accident as well. So it's like, you know, when you're playing around with different effects and stuff and trying to see, like, what you can do creatively, you tend to come up with things that you wouldn't think of if you were just trying to do everything as deliberately as possible. So then after that, I've got a bit of phaser. You can see, or you can hear. This one is just on here for a bit of texture, like I'm not using this really for like any of the modulation or I don't have any modulation on it. I just got the frequency and the feedback set there and the dry wet like that. And this is kind of similar to the vocoder, it's just adding kind of like this cool synthy texture to it. It's a good way to kind of get it away from sounding like just a really bare kind of saw wave or like kind of a synth sound. You know sometimes when you're playing with synths in a style like this that's so based on texture and like sonics, it can be hard to kind of get away from that really dry synth sound, so this is like a good way to help and do help with doing that. Then after that, I've got a bit of chorus. This is just to give it a bit more kind of like fatness. You can hear it really helps to beef it up because it's making it a bit wider. I've just got the amount there, right there, dry wet like that. Pretty simple. So then the next thing we've got here is a saturator, which sounds like this. So you can hear this is just kind of dragging it up even more, making it a bit more crunchy and gritty. I like what this is doing to the sound a lot. I feel like it really helps to, to kind of pull it out. And it's like the kind of thing of trying to make your drums and your sounds hit harder. This really helps. Like, think about it. You could settle for this, which sounds pretty solid. It's definitely, you know, almost there. But then when you add this, there you go. It really brings it to life. So with this, I've just got the drive up a bit. And then I'm using the wave shape. You can see I've got the damp up a little bit, which is making it kind of like do almost like a transient shaper kind of effect. Here's without it. And then here's with it. So yeah, you can hear it's kind of like shaping that and giving it a little bit less decay. Kind of helps to give it a cool texture and it makes it kind of more blown out setting with the distortion. After that, I've got this echo, which you can hear is not really in there too much. I've got the dry wet pretty low at 6.6% and then I've just got the left ear and the right ear on two different times. I've got the left ear synced to dotted eighth notes, the right ear is on 25.7 milliseconds. This just helps to give it a bit of stereo width because they're doing two different things so you're hearing this these feedbacks of this delay at two different times and you can hear it's giving you like a wider stereo image yeah like that and you can see i've also got the feedback up a little bit so it's not like a lot it's just kind of giving it a little bit of more life after that, I've got this auto pan, which is doing a very similar, or actually the same exact thing as to what it was doing when I showed you on the kick, on that little bass. It's just doing this sort of faux side chain. Same thing, saw wave, inverted, quarter notes, phase at zero. Pretty simple stuff. After that, I've just got this OTT, which you can hear is helping to really, like, pull it out even more. It's kind of like what that saturator is doing, where it's just, like... Really blowing the sound out, and again, it's really helping me get away from the kind of like dry synth texture. Like, if I take off all of the stuff that I've added for texture here, and just play the sound with like the delays and stuff, you'll hear it sounds alright.
But then when we add all of this stuff, it just takes on such a different and more interesting character. And it really helps, again, to bring it to life and not make it just like a boring synth sound. Um, so then the last thing here is just this EQ8, which is making this cut here, cutting out all the low end, because this sound has a lot of it, as you can see, which would get in the way of the kick and the bass. Um, and then I'm also making this cut here. Just to make it kind of more like scoop sounding, it helps to make it, I just think it sounds a little better. I don't really like those like brash honky mids. So yeah, I'm just kind of cutting that out, and yeah, so that's pretty much it for this one. Um, I just want to show you guys kind of like how to make the style of techno, what you want to think about going into it. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed. So as usual, you can get the project file and the samples from this video in the description for free. So make sure to check that out. If you're a patron on my Patreon, check there. Make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. Let me know what you think of this video in the comments. And remember to check out that mix as well. It's at the top of the description. Can't mix it, miss it. Ah, mixing up my words. Like I said, you will love it if you love this video. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a great day, and I will see you all tomorrow with another video.